I'm going to talk about arthroscopic bankart pain for the shoulder anterior instability. You know the shoulder joint is the highest range of motion and has the highest rate of dislocation. Shoulder joint is injured in many sports activities, especially with overhead activities. What maintains the stability is we have the bone, the muscles, the capsule, the labrum and the tendons. They all contribute for the stability of the shoulders. If you look at the anatomy, we have a very nice labrum which keeps the head of humerus shifting either anterior or posteriorly. And after the labrum, we have three sorts of ligaments. They are called as glenohumeral ligaments, superior, middle and inferior ligament portion. And also it's been surrounded by the capsule. What happens if we have a dislocation? The anterior inferior part of the capsule and the ligaments, the labrum is torn away. So that's the way that to keep the humeral head shifting forwardly. In physical exam, we can see excessive motion between the glenoid and humerus. We call it as translation. And also there is an inferior shift, which we call as sulcus sign. The best way to image this condition is uh, MRI. With the MRI, we can see the relation of the capsule with the glenoid rim. There are, there are options and varieties of this lesion. It's called Bankart, Alsa, GLAD, or Perthes lesion. They are all the variations of this injury. And also in the imaging, if we use uh, contrast media, we call it as arthro MRI. We can see the soft tissue information much better, especially in the diagnosis of slap lesions. We can have a perfect views with the arthro MRI. In Bankart lesion, what we do when we see the joint, if you see the joint, the labrum and the capsule. In this joint, you can hardly see any labrum, and the ligamentous complex, complex is shifted medially and is elongated. It is laxed and thrown away. So we try to we try to reattach this labral complex again. But if it's an old case, it is elongated. We need some advancement. If you can see this, this A point is almost at the seven o'clock position. We try to shift it to five o'clock position. So I use single portal system with the single portal system. First, I try to release the ligamentous complex from the bone and then I put a suture. I usually use PDS sutures and using a shooter passer. Many companies have different shooter passers. The first one is the spectrum and then we have ideal hook, lasso loop and other stuff. With the structure suture, we try to pull this labrum superiorly and we can see any other external uh, adhesions present so we can release the adhesions either with a elevator or osteotome or with shaver or uh, radio frequency i like radio frequency but the danger is radio frequency creates some heat inside when you use radio frequency try to use it with the suction because if you use with suction so you will get rid of the hot fluid inside then we insert our anchors and I use the PDS sutures as shooters, sutures shuttle. So you can see that with this inferior uh, sutures, I suture it. There are two different kind of anchors on the market. They are either double loaded or single loaded. I like the double loaded ones because sometimes I like to do two sutures from the same anchor or as a sense of security if I fail in the with the anchors, with the suture, so I can use the other one. So we try to make three anchors here. First, we make a retraction suture. With that traction suture, we make the advancement superiorly. Then we had the first anchor, and we have two or three anchors. Generally, we use three anchors because uh, starting from the five o'clock point to three o'clock point, with the three anchors, we can provide good stability. And with the third anchors, we can make a good uh, stable labral fixation. Sometimes 
or mostly if it's an outlet the bone cart lesion is also with slab lesion because biceps is also contributing to the stability and if you have a high energy trauma then they have the slab lesion as well and with this slab lesion we can see it if you pay attention to this video uh, different than the other you can see an intact labral tissue we release the tissue we put our anchors after we putting our anchors we use the shuttles try to suture them we we do the three sutures at the same style after making uh, continuing the bunker repairs we are going to repair the slab lesion from the same portal we we put the third anchors and now you can see the slab lesion so it is debatable using the slab lesion in the beginning or not because some authors wants to repair the slab first then repair the bunkart uh, they say that uh, biceps is also contributing to, to the stability once you repair slab uh, i think uh, repairing slab is the last uh, i do at the last because first i try to do it from the most difficult part at the deepest five o'clock for slab lesion i use uh, epidural needle and also you see that this is a curate with a whole curate because uh, when I put the needle here, sometimes it is very hard to see the other end of the PDS. With this epidural needle, it's like a suture passer because epidural needles have a little bit blunted, uh, curved end. Uh, with this PDS, I can help the PDS. PDS sutures can help uh, help us a lot because we can use use it either as traction sutures or sh uh, sh shuttle relay. With this curate, we just pull the PDS downwards. Then, with another bird beak, we are going to catch the suture. With the beak, this is the wrong side, so we try to understand the style. Then we put the take the PDS. Then we are put going to put the anchors. I use Wilmington portal for the anchors because it is safer if if you come with a higher angle. Now we have the sutures, then we will do the same technique. We using this PDS as a shuttle. We we make the same the first knot. As a shoot sutures shuttle, PDS is very comfortable and also it is very safe. After tying it, now we have the another extra sutures. We can do it either anteriorly or if the labral tear is extending to the posterior side, we can use it as a posterior labral repair. Now I'm putting another PDS suture. Now because if we are going to make a hole here, you see that it is very adhesive there. If I want to make a better visualization, I put the PDS. I pull it back. Now you can see from this picture, I put a mosquito because I just lift the supraspinatus upwards so, so that I can have a better visualization and now I can put my PDS sutures if I don't like the position I can try try other attempts I have the PDS now the knots are tight from one single portal I did bank art and slab repairs it worked then I now I'm going to change the camera. Now I'm checking the rest of it. This is the subscapularis and upper part. I decided to make another anchor and I repaired that as well. So you see that I, I use only one suture because here I don't need two sutures. I change the cameras, check the check the repair with a probe, check the humeral site, and it's finished. If I have a bone insufficiency, I like to make a trilat procedure. It is not like uh, arthroscopic latage, but with this uh, procedure, uh, I can see this is a revision case operated five times before open and arthroscopic bone cut still. Uh, glenohumeral translation is very high. And now we try to go inside. 
inside you see that there's no lab room you say the laxed uh, ligamentous and capsule so first i try to repair the most inferior part the most inferior part is like six o'clock position i do the same thing i i put a pds I put the PDS, afterwards I put the anchors and shift the, as I use as a shutter relay, I use the PDS and tighten the, tighten the deeper part. So I repaired six o'clock position, but the rest is not enough. So, so I use, I want to make a bony part. So I'm going past, past, after tightening it, I try to make uh, cleaning at the anterior glenoidrim because I'm going to put a bone graft over there. First, I shave it. After shaving it, I clean up with a uh, radio frequency with the brush. I refresh the cortical bone. And I put the uh, bone over there. So, our target is the stability, it's a multifactorial thing we need to acquire the balance and also we have to maintain the balance so this is a good slide a good way i can bring balance to your life we all need balance in our life thank you very much